Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be, be glad in it. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you this morning because you are still in control of the world that you made. You continue to sustain your world and all its inhabitants. And so we praise you because you have been good to us. You have spared our lives to see another new day, another new week. And you blessed us last week. We enter this week not because of any good we have done, but because of your grace, unearned, unmerited, and undeserved. We thank you that you love us despite our sins, despite our rebellion against you. Well, we pray this morning that you'll bring us back to yourself. And Lord, you would put within us a new spirit. A spirit of obedience. May we use this morning to consecrate or reconsecrate ourselves before you. Pray that you'll wash us again. And make us clean. We pray this morning as we worship you, we may not treat this as the ordinary thing we do, but the extraordinary thing we do to stand before you, to admit <coughs> that we have not been all that we are. with a determination, O oh Lord, to be close to you. Some writer puts it, draw me nearer, draw me nearer. We ask that your spirit would draw us closer to you and that our fellowship with you will be strengthened. And again, Lord, we would find purpose, purpose for living, purpose for worshiping you. May this our worship come up to you in heavenly places as sweet smell and savor to your very nostril and you will be pleased. And in turn you will send down blessing upon us. So Lord into your hand we commend ourselves and our worship. And we pray that your will might be done because we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
you for answering prayers. Thank you that you're never too busy to hear us when we call on you. Thank you for the relationship we have with you. You're always welcoming and you answer prayers. Help us to know your will. And we know your will through the study of your word, the scripture. May we be diligent in studying your word so that we may know your will and your purpose for us. We need your intervention. We need your presence. We thank you that we know you at a time like this. Everyone has a need for you. Everyone has a prayer request, a prayer concern. So this morning I lift up each person, each request, expressed or unexpressed. You know a deep longing. You know that which brings us anguish and pain and sorrow and grief. So we lift up before you, those this morning who are dealing with sorrow, are dealing with pain, dealing with anxiety, those who are having sleepless nights because something is troubling them, something is causing worry. We lift up those who are sick, Lord. Remember Leah this morning who would have been here. We pray strength for her. We pray healing, deliverance. Strengthen her faith in you. And together we join in the faith, believing that she will be well soon. We lift up others, O oh Lord, who are ill. And you know the list is long. For those you remember, Anne, and Catherine, Lloyd, Nora, and Rose, our dear sister and friend, Claire White. Ivy and Evie, Jim and Robert, so Lord, you know the circle we ask that you would extend the circle to include our friends, our cousins, our neighbors, co-workers, and even others within this congregation, Lord, who are not feeling well this morning, we ask that you would lift them up. Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy. We ask that you remember our country as it goes through another presidential election campaign, that you would guide and you would inspire our nation. At the end of this, we would be united as one people, one nation unto God and under God. Pray for our churches, that you would bless our church, that you would strengthen us to walk on the right path. To walk according to scriptures. 
to walk in righteousness. And you tell us in your word, O oh Lord, as you talk the Beatitudes, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Lord, help us to shine our light, our small light, because you are the big light. And when we all get together and shine that light, others will see the light and walk towards the light and find you as their Lord and Savior. These mercies we pray in the precious name of Jesus.
to the death below, but he restored my life. Sing praise to the Lord, all his faithful people. Remember what the Holy One has done. His anger left and give him thanks. His anger lasts from the moment, his goodness for a lifetime. Tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. And the next one is St. John, chapter 16, 33. I have told you this so that you will have peace by being um, united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. sermon on that thing doesn't mean that sometime to come I won't get back there um, so this morning I'm going to talk about the the blessedness of brokenness There's so much thing has come together uh, primarily I want to talk about trusting God in our brokenness trusting God in our time of brokenness <clears throat> let us pray loving God we thank you 
that you remember us when things aren't well. You are God. You care for those who are broken. You're present beside those who are broken. And because of your presence, we can have peace. Because of who you are, the God of the fatherless, the God of orphans and widows, you can be present with us. Hear our prayers, O Lord, as we listen to your word. Grant to us receptive hearts and minds. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. For is anger. Last only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And the NIV reads. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And Jesus' word in the Gospel according to St. John, 16 and verse 33, Jesus says that I have told you these things that you might have peace. Be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. <clears throat> David is the author of the psalm, Psalm 30. We are not quite sure from which experience in his life he wrote the psalm. But we do know that he had his fair share of weeping nights and joyful mornings. Weeping nights and joyful mornings. Who cannot identify with that? Weeping nights and joyful mornings. I invite you then to journey with me into what I call the lived experience of David. He went through weeping nights when King Saul was seeking to take his life. But joyful mornings when he heard that King Saul was dead. Saul was killed in battle. And David was able now to occupy the throne as king. He went through weeping nights 
when his adultery with Bathsheba that which was hidden became public made known public by the prophet the man of God but experience joyful mourning once he confessed his sins to God and was reassured of God's forgiveness. We know the story very well, you know, the burden and the heavy weight that was on David's shoulder, living days and days after the days with this big secret. And he knew that that which is secret will one day come to light. And he had a relationship with God and that was negatively impacted by that behavior. And when he confessed his sins before God and he received God's forgiveness, he experienced Joyful mornings. David experienced weeping nights when his own son Absalom chased him for a long time trying to kill him. Family feud. But he experienced joyful mornings when he was able to re return to Jerusalem and sat upon his throne, God spared his life. But look at the text that was read, Psalm 30. In verse 1, David exalts the Lord for lifting him up and not allowing his enemies to have dominion over him. In verse 2, David acknowledges that God heard his cry for help and healed him. Healed him. David went through major sickness. In fact, David was critically ill this time. A uh, great illness. And he prayed to God and God healed him. David had many Weeping nights during the time of sickness. And when God healed him, he had several mornings of joy. He had joyful mornings. And David knew that it was God who had spared him, spared his life from trouble. Danger. Psalm 23, David said, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. But night after night, he went to bed and he wondered about tomorrow. What was going to happen? And so David here encourages us to praise God. That we can come out of our nights of weeping. We can conclude that because of David's joyful mornings, he was able to write Psalm 30, a psalm of thanksgiving and a psalm of celebration of God's deliverance. When last have you had a joyful morning? You woke up and you were joyful. Did you praise God? When last have you had a weeping night? 
You don't have to answer. So having made that journey with me through the lived experience of David, here are my questions to you. What makes you weep? When last have you wept? What is that which causes you distress and grief? In the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, there is a question. Is there trouble anywhere? What brings you mental anguish and pain? What is it that keeps you from getting a good night's sleep? Huh. Some people will say, restlessness is all I experience at night. I toss to the left, I toss to the right, I look up and I see the ceiling. What caused you sleepless nights? Somebody's employment situation or unemployment may cause them to weep. Somebody's constant struggle with sin in their lives and they just can't seem to break loose may cause them to weep. Somebody's broken relationship with someone they love may cause them to weep. Many families are fractured by malice, bitterness, and grievances. Many marriages are on the rocks. Many children are having problems with their parents. Adult children and teenagers. Some people may weep over their financial situation. They're getting broke or they're heading into bankruptcy. Some people may weep because they, they have a bad diagnosis or a bad prognosis. Read your illness. Question again, what causes you to weep? A man says, God knows all about it. Amen. Isn't that something to praise God about this morning? Amen. Praise God about it. That God knows all about it. Some people are, have been buried on a ton of weight of secrecy and burden. But the point is that none of us are immune to pain, whether emotional, physical, or, or mental. And this is a verse that has a whole lot to say about pain and, and patience and about the promise of joy. In fact, the psalmist says, when all this is done, joy comes in the morning. I just want to say three things and, 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 and close the service. Uh, the first is that this is a verse that speaks to the heart of anyone who has ever had a rough night. Anyone who has ever felt like the dawn was too far off. Have you ever been to bed and, and you, you, things are here, are here, and the night seemed too long. You, you just want to get out of bed 
and, 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 and begin to get yourself enveloped and distracted by, by other things. This is a verse that says, hey, I know it's tough. I know you are hurting. But hold on. The morning is coming. Amen. You see, in the midst of our weeping, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our anguish, we are called to endure, to hold on. This isn't a, a passive endurance. Or, or a simply waiting for the storm to pass. No, this is an active endurance, a clinging to God and his promises, uh, is, uh, which involves a determination on our part to keep trusting God, even when everything in us wants to give up. I know sometimes we come to the point like we want to give up. That's the purpose of prayer. That's the purpose of going to church. That's the purpose of this Christian life. What good? What good is it for me? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The second thing I want to point out is that in the midst of our weeping, we are called to remember. Israel was always reminded by the prophet to remember God. <laughs> Never forget God regardless of what is happening to you. We are called to remember God's faithfulness in the past. To remember his promises for the future. This is remember. And, and it's not a mere mental exercise. But a deep soul level remembering that stirs up faith and hope within us. And, and, and sometimes what we need is our faith to be stirred up because it lies dormant. And sometimes God sends us circumstances and situation to stir up our faith. Because we know of ourselves, we cannot overcome. In fact, we are told all the time that the arms of flesh will fail us. We dare not trust our, our own, we trust in God. How easy it is to forget what God did yesterday. How quickly our minds get consumed with worry and fear over the circumstances that are facing us now. Or the unknown future that we forget the good things that God has already done. And what God has done in the past, God will do it today and God will do it tomorrow. Remember his wonderful deeds which he has done. His marvel and his judgments from his mouth. Declares 1 Chronicles 6, 16, 12. Someone writes, As my family faces ongoing hardship, we are trying to focus on the faithfulness and goodness of God. By remembering all the things he has done for our family. The most important being the gift of salvation by faith alone through the work of Jesus Christ. And let me close with this. In the midst of our weeping, in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our anguish, 
in the midst of our turmoil, we are called to hope. Hope. Love, faith, hope. Hope in God. And this hope is not wishful thinking. Not a crossing of our fingers and hoping for the best. No, this hope is a, is a confident expectation. A sure and certain knowledge that God will do what God has promised. This hope is not based on our circumstances, but on God's character. It is not based on what we can see but on what God has said. It's not based on our feelings, but on God's faithfulness. We cannot base our hope on feelings. At this moment you feel this, at the moment you feel that, come on, feelings are fleeting. This moment you feel loving, at the moment you feel hateful, Not on feeling, but on God's character and God's faithfulness. Hear this. Your story doesn't end in the night. Because the night is temporary. When things aren't working out, and you feel like you're going the wrong way, don't get discouraged. It is simply a season. So we go through seasons of weeping, seasons of hurt, seasons of anguish, seasons of pain, seasons of joy. Maybe some of you right now are going through seasons of joy. Things can't be better. You're happy. But what always frightens us and scares us are the weeping moments. You see, thank God for the joy in the morning. When joy comes, Joy turns everything. It turns winter into summer. It turns grief into gladness. It turns mourning into singing. It turns bitter things into sweet things. And it turns wilderness into paradise. What we fear most Weeping nights. Jesus says in John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Let me close with this story. You might have heard about Horatio G. Spafford. He was a successful lawyer and businessman who suffered tremendous loss in his life. Not only did he lose his business in the great Chicago fire, I think it was 1871, somewhere there. He lost his business. And he and his wife lost their son to scarlet fever. And then later he said, you know, life is rough. We need a vacation. So he sent his wife and four daughters from Chicago to England on that vacation. 
And then he said, you know something, I will not go with you right now. I'll stay behind for a couple of days and finish up some work and then I'll join you in England. And there his wife and four daughters started their journey. And on that voyage, two ships, including the one in which his wife and four daughters traveled, collided. And his four daughters died. And the wife was taken to England, and she sent him a telegram. Save alone. What must I do? And that grieving man set sail for England on the same route he lost his four daughters. And he was taken to the spot where the accident, accident occurred. And in grief, grief stricken, weeping eyes, he penned the words and somebody has put music to it. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll. Whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, Hallelujah. It is well with my soul. I don't know what you're going through today. I have no idea. But you can look up that song. It is well with my soul. I want you to Feel assured today before you leave here that it is well with your soul. That's the bottom line. That God loves the brokenhearted. God draws near to the brokenhearted.
Almighty. Thank you for your promise to be with us in our pain, in our anguish, in our sorrow, in our grief. You draw near to us. Be with us this moment, and tomorrow, and in the future, as we face the challenges of life unexpectedly. But we know that we can call on you, regardless of the day or the time, because you never sleep. You never go on vacation. You always attend to us. Thank you for your love for us. And as we go, we go in your name with your arms around us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and always. Amen. Amen.